to Third Phase of Moon. My name is Blake Cousins and we're going to go over four incredible videos submitted to us for the month of October 2013. Now let's get to it. Finn Casey from the UK noticed strange clouds in the sky. He grabbed his camera and what he caught, could it be a fireball or a UFO? You decide. Now for our next video, all the way from Dublin, Ireland, Wayne Maccabee managed to capture this incredibly fast UFO in broad daylight. I don't know what the hell that is, too, this camel. And it ain't the plane, I'll show you a plane. There's a difference. I can't find this. Now let's get to our next video. Josh Romani from Grand Junction, Colorado just sent us this video shot on October 30th. Now for our next video from Salt Lake City, Erica Luke shoots this triangle shaped formation in the night skies. Okay, so I am recording this and I am freaking the freaking frickety hello out because I'm looking through my naked eye and I can see one light, um, not two are the other two that are below it. I can see the light on top and you can't see the light, the two lights below it at all. Um, uh, um, uh, yeah. <laughs> hey, <laughs> I am full of oh my, okay, here's all, what in the hell? 
Oh. Okay, well, um... Uh... Her. I'm really scared to move. I don't want to lose this and I still cannot see... Um, I cannot... I can't see the other two objects and when I look at my phone, they are as bright as day and so I don't understand why I know it's right there. It kind of fades out. Um oh my god. Excuse my bad language people. Um okay, I'm gonna get we want to thank everybody from around the world who submitted their incredible videos right here at Third Phase of Moon. And to all the 120,000 subscribers, keep your eyes on the skies. And if you capture anything amazing, you can send it to Third Phase of Moon via Skype or Facebook. My name's Blake Cousins, and we'll see you again next time. Welcome back to Third Phase of Moon. My name's Blake Cousins. Join me along with my brother Brent as we go on location in the Pacific Ocean looking for drones of the sea. On location at Kwai Hai Harbor on the Big Island, we're going to be speaking with Hawaiian Operations Manager Voss Pedorian. Voss, how did you, you know, come up with the idea of the wave glider? How did it come about? The wave glider came about in an effort to transmit whale songs um, ashore, uh, specifically into one of the founders' living rooms. Can you tell us why here in Hawaii? One of the founders uh, actually lives here in Puaco. Um, a lot of the efforts um, that, that occurred originally to pipe the whale songs into the living room really occurred there. Um, and it was sort of a natural progression uh, here in Puaco. If you look at the design on this, it exactly resembles sky rods or, you know, the sky fish. Absolutely incredible. What is the theory behind the design? So the main theory behind the wave glider is that we take vertical wave motion at the surface and turn it into forward motion of the vehicle. Uh, that really essentially happens with um, our ability to harness vertical wave motion into direct forward thrust. Um, very similar, um, it really in effect to when you stick your hand out the window on the freeway and tilt it, um, its lift is created and creates the sort of forward motion with your hand. What's the maximum speed that these things can travel over the surface of the water with the glider underneath? Uh, we do somewhere typically between 1.5 and 1.8 knots. And it's using entirely the force and the swells of the ocean to self-power itself, correct? Absolutely. Um, so we basically turn vertical wave motion into forward thrust. Canada, France, and Keck are here in Hawaii and there's something special about it and you're here in Hawaii. Can you tell us what makes it so special? Much for the same reasons that they're here in the sense of uh, the environment that it gives us for testing and evaluation. Um, it allows us to uh, essentially test about 300 days a year. Uh, we have the ability being right here in Kauai High, we have easy access to um, some very dynamic sea states. Um, we can be right out here on the west side off of Kauai High and the weather can be very, very calm, much like it is today. Um, we can go just a few miles out around the point, um, up towards Upolu Point and be out in Alanui Haha Channel, which is a, a, a pretty intense marine environment. Well, it's gonna be quite amazing. A little bit later, we're gonna be on location, going out on the boat and seeing on how the wave glider works. I can't wait, but I got a couple other questions for you. Can we take a look at the warehouse in the back? Absolutely. All right. The CEO of your company claims that 90% of the Earth's oceans have still yet to be discovered. We know more about space than the ocean. Do you think it's possible that these craft could capture on film, since they have the cameras, a creature that we still don't know, some kind of leviathan? Uh, I would say that that's plausible. Um, the vehicle is a data harvesting tool, so um, any number of sensors are integrated into the vehicle, so depending on what you're trying to measure and look for, I would say that it's, it's possible, for sure. Well, you might get lucky one of these days capturing the smoking gun footage of uh, an amazing creature right there on the surface of the ocean. That would be exciting. So we have the ability to communicate with the vehicle through satellite connection. Um, that occurs through this dome here. Um, this is an Iridium satellite connection. Um, we have the ability to stream all of our data. Um, 
as well as telemetry and communication information um, through that connection. What's the lifetime of the wave glider? Um, they're currently, um, essentially we like to keep them out uh, anywhere from 6 to 12 months. Well, these things, what is the price range for one of these? This vehicle, as you see here, um, runs between 175 and uh, about 200,000. Wow, do you worry about maybe uh, pirates out on the open ocean coming across one of these things and, you know, taking these things out and selling it on the market? Well, I don't think we've had any stolen that I'm aware of. Um, they're an incredibly difficult vehicle to actually uh, to recover if you're not trained to do it. Boss, who is your uh, biggest client for the Wave Glider? Uh, right now, we have essentially probably a shared market between uh, the oil and gas business and the Department of Defense. Wow, what is the Department of Defense using with the Wave Glider? I don't know if I can answer that. I want to talk about your biggest or one of the biggest clients, big oil industry. If there were a you know natural disaster, big oil spill in the ocean, could these Wave Gliders help and clean in the assistance? Absolutely. Um, so recently we've assisted um, in cleanup efforts, um, more specifically more measurement efforts um, in that it's a data harvesting tool. Uh, we have the ability to measure um, essentially what's in the water um, and the wave glider is actually quite effective at that. Well speaking of getting into the water, I can't wait to get in the water and see these things in action. Absolutely. The production crew and I are briefed on safety instructions. Free diving in the Pacific is serious business. All right, boss, we're on location on the boat. How long is it gonna take us to get out to the first wave glider? Uh, about 10 to 15 minutes. All right, well, we're on the adventure. I can't wait to get in the water. Departing from Kwai Hai Harbor, we're in search of the wave glider, approximately eight miles off the coast of the Big Island, and we're gonna be using GPS coordinates to track it down. Now the adventure begins and the ocean conditions are perfect and the captain tells us we will be arriving at our destination momentarily. I think I see it, boss. Is that it? it yeah, it's right there off the starboard side. All right, we're getting in close and we're gonna see what the wave glider looks like in action. This is about as good as uh, what perpetual motion gets right out here. Uh, taking energy from the water and the, the swells. Absolutely, as long as we have surface motion of the waves, we have thrust, which allows us to move forward through the water. Now, how deep is the ocean here? Because I'm quite, uh, you know, afraid of sharks. Are there big ones you see out here? Uh, sometimes we do see large creatures. We're in about 170 fathoms of water right now. All right, well, let's get uh, our dive gear on and uh, hit the water. Absolutely. Now this is when Voss Pedoring gets to work. Suiting up and taking a look at the wave glider down below. The production crew's ready, cameras are in the water, and we're about to get into it right now. As we approach the wave glider to get a closer look, I think to myself, this is the first world's wave powered autonomous marine robot designed to help address the big challenges the world faces, including global climate change, national security, hurricane and tsunami warnings. As we approach the wave glider and seeing it in action, it almost seems as if it's alive. Because of the energy independence, wave gliders are able to persistently gather and communicate ocean data on a far broader scale and with greater timelines than ever before, at a fraction of the cost of traditional solutions. They open up new abilities to map and explore for resources, to protect and secure marine assets, or to conduct groundbreaking scientific research. From the Arctic to the equator, wave gliders are expanding our ability to understand the world's oceans, upon which we depend for food, trade, economics, and the health of our environment.
As we come back to the harbor, I think of the wave glider we just left behind and its continuing exploration and explanation of enormous mass amounts of information that comes into them every day. The dawn of recorded history and the digital age will change history forever and liquid robotics and the wave gliders around the world will continuously update the human race. All right, boss, we just got back off the boat and can you tell me, I wanna know, what will the wave glider do for humanity in a benefit? Well, although it is a, somewhat of a cliche, I mean, I really think knowledge is power. Um, and these guys have the ability to harvest data, um, I think, to uh, increase our knowledge of the oceans in a way that we have never been able to do.